Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Los Vascos Wash Process Columbia from Kiss the Hippo. And there's the bag right there. And Kiss the Hippo, based out of London, England, and this is their first time appearing on this channel, so I'm going to go ahead and include a photo from back in March of 2020, when I was out in London for what was essentially a three-week-long coffee crawl between England and Ireland, and I got the opportunity to visit their cafe in person. And I discovered Kiss the Hippo through this book right here. And if nobody's ever seen this book before, then this is the London Coffee Guide. And I believe they also have one for uh, Los Angeles and New York as well. But essentially it's a book that has 270 coffee shops and they have some pretty in-depth descriptions of these coffee shops. And I tried to visit as many of those cafes as I could while I was out in London. But they have Kiss the Hippo on here listed as a new and noteworthy coffee roaster. And I'll be completely honest, I don't remember too much from the experience. I was pretty jet lagged and sleep deprived when I visited Kiss the Hippo. It was one of the first cafes I visited. But what I do remember was ordering one of their higher end coffees, as well as it being a really stunning coffee shop. I did want to go back and purchase a bag of beans to bring back to the United States after I was done with the rest of the trip but COVID happened while I was in Ireland, so I didn't get the opportunity to, and I really wanted to review their coffee when I got an opportunity. So this was part of the Coffee Vine's most recent coffee subscription, which also included the barn, and I figured this was kind of two birds right here, as I could try Kiss the Hippo, as well as the barn, which is currently on my suggestions list, and kind of give some overall thoughts and impressions of both of these coffees. So I'm looking forward to discussing this one. This right here is day 29. And they do have a brew guide on their website. It's a pretty loose brew guide, and the ratio they have is a 14.2 to 1 water to coffee ratio for the Chemex anyway. And that's a little strong. I settled on 15 to 1 water to coffee ratio, and I brewed it at 93 degrees Celsius, which translates to about roughly 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And the roast profile for this coffee is a little interesting, because if this was an American coffee, you could say that this is even pushing the medium spectrum on an American coffee, as it's closer to a medium than even a light medium. So we'll definitely say that it is a medium European for the roast profile, as in my experience during my time in London, a lot of these coffees tend to be even more developed than most of the specialty American coffee roasters. So that's kind of interesting and always worth noting. But with all of that out of the way, let's start discussing this coffee. So day 18, which was the first time I got an opportunity to try this coffee, and I noted that, of course, that it was a little bit more developed than I had expected. And again, given that I ordered something from their higher end offerings when I was out in London, it's entirely possible that that was something on the lighter end of their spectrum for them on that day. Didn't necessarily see this more developed coffee as a negative, though. There's a surprising bit of savoriness in the cup, which was not necessarily expected going into the cup, and it stood out quite a bit, but the most distinct thing I was pulling out from this coffee was kind of a semi-sweet caramel. Even with all that said, it was a kind of solid first impression. I thought it was a pretty okay cup of coffee to start with. Day 21, adjusted to kiss the hippo's recipe and was getting significantly less of the savoriness, and truth be told, throughout the rest of the time drinking this coffee, there wasn't as much of the savoriness as experienced on that first day. But there was a kind of strange, slightly tin taste to it, and they did, Coffee Vine did include a, a third wave uh, water packet with it as well, and I used that only on this day because I actually liked the way the coffee tasted a little bit better with the water that I typically use, so I tried it on this day, and it did have a slight bit of a tinny taste to it. Fair bit of roastiness as well, and some pleasant, bold caramel characteristics to it. And while these first two days don't sound like the greatest of first two days, the coffee does get better. Day 23, noting again that it's definitely a more developed cup of coffee than I'm normally used to drinking, especially for European coffees. Heavy, pronounced shark caramel in the cup with a slight bit of the apple acidity. Plenty of South American characteristics coming from this as well, including some really abundant chocolate, as well as, of course, the nuttiness that was coming from this, too. Day 25, brewed it through the automatic coffee maker, and this is when I was kind of playing around with the automatic coffee maker, so there were a couple of days that uh, was put through the automatic coffee maker, and truth be told, I can't necessarily decide which way I liked it a little bit better. Probably slightly more through the automatic coffee maker, but I was getting a slight bit more depth in this cup at this time. Slightly darker components, including some rich honey, and a more pronounced apple in the cup. Kind of interesting, was getting some better apple in the cup when it was brewed through the automatic coffee maker, and just liked it slightly better this way on this day. 
day 27, another day back to the automatic coffee maker. And it's been a pretty consistent cup, even with the different brew methods. The honey and body both stood out a fair bit more in addition to that apple acidity. So again, pulling out a little bit more of the apple. And I know a lot of people like their body, especially if you're going for something a little bit more developed. So in that sense, if I was looking for something a little bit more developed, then I'm getting a lot of some really nice components from this cup when brewed through the automatic coffee maker. And then day 28, final day, took any sort of notes and it was one more day back through the Chemex and uh, it, as it cooled down, you could really feel the smokiness kind of ramping up. It was a pretty smoky cup of coffee overall and was getting a fair bit of dark chocolate as well as a dark caramel and a slight and subtle honey finish to the cup. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. And I know we do not have a tasting wheel that looks like this uh, on this channel and however many reviews we have, but yeah, this is a very different looking tasting wheel as you can see right here. Let's see, the two things that are at the highest, the caramel and the chocolate, and that's not too surprising. This is a very crowd pleaser, traditional washed Colombian coffee as it has those very traditional uh, South American characteristics to it. Uh, the saltiness at a level two. I think that could be pushed up to a level three, but we're focusing on the caramel and chocolate for right now as those are extremely common for washed Colombians, especially especially slightly more developed washed Colombians. But the other things, as you'll see on this tasting wheel that are pretty high are the uh, body, the savoriness, the bitterness, and the smokiness. Those are all higher than we usually have for most tasting wheels, and they were definitely there. And we noted the savoriness early on in this cup of coffee, and you could probably push that even to a level four from the kind of unique out there first experience we were having on day 18 but it definitely does have a kind of bitter dark chocolate component to it. And that's why the bitterness is as high as it is. And it's definitely a pretty smoky cup of coffee. One of the smokier cups of coffee we've had in quite a while, maybe one of the smokiest we've had in the entire time of reviewing coffees on this channel. But uh, the fruits that stood out, the citrus fruit, again, we mentioned the apple and we like to lump the apple in with the citrus fruit the most as it's the apple that we were experiencing the most, the sort of fruit components to it. Uh, berry fruit we have at a level three. We didn't note on it too much in the notes, but there was a slight bit of this kind of grape candy to it as well. That was lingering underneath and it was probably just as pronounced as the apple that we were experiencing from this. So those are the two things we pushed at level three. They were probably both a little lower, maybe two and a half, but we pushed them, bumped them both up to a level three. And kind of looking back on it, probably could push the saltiness up to a level three as there's a fair bit of nuttiness that we're experiencing from this cup of coffee. Not the sweetest cup, not the most acidic cup. That's to be expected with the more developed profile. But other than that, I think that this tasting wheel looks pretty good. It would look a little different, probably a higher body with the automatic coffee maker. And I think for the most part, the rest of it would look pretty similar with the automatic coffee maker. All right, so our overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee it's kind of funny because the entire time we've been discussing it, it doesn't sound like we necessarily enjoyed it that much, but I honestly thought it was a pretty fine cup of coffee. It's one of those coffees that definitely on the more developed side, but even with that more developed side, you can enjoy stuff that is a little bit more developed. And I like this coffee. I, I won't say I love this coffee, but the kind of really rich caramel that was coming from it was a really pleasant contrast to the overly dark, chocolates that we were experiencing. I don't like chocolate. I like dark chocolate even less, but even then the fact that I enjoyed the caramel that was coming from this was a really, really nice experience. And having this kind of heavier body overall, it was a nice contrast to some extremely light coffees that I'm drinking right now that will also have reviews coming up here shortly. But even then, it's obviously not gonna be my favorite cup of coffee, but it was. I was not disappointed by this coffee in any sense. I think it's just gonna be a little different from a lot of people that do watch a lot of these videos and what they specifically look for. So the type of person I would suggest this coffee to is somebody that does like a much more developed coffee if you're into the really dark chocolate as well as the caramel, then I think this is a pretty good fit for you. It has so many of those traditional washed Colombian characteristics that even somebody like myself did enjoy this cup of coffee in contrast to the fact that it's not necessarily going to be my flavor profile and it wasn't necessarily what I was expecting. But even then I thought it was just solid overall. So a coffee and a coffee roaster that I would go back and try again in the future, but would probably be trying it under the guise knowing that it's going to be more developed than what I typically drink. For the most part, I think I'm gonna leave this review at that. If you have by chance had an opportunity to try either this coffee or anything from the Kiss from Kiss the Hippo, would love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well as them. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Los Vascos Wash Process Columbia from Kiss the Hippo. Thank you for watching.